All right, so in today's video, we are going to discuss logarithms and time complexities. So this is something that confused me for a very long time. And if this is something you're already familiar with, you don't really need to watch this. You probably already know it. But there's certain instances when we're deducing complexities with like things like binary search we'll see, things like merge sort, quick sort, where we see a logarithm appear in the complexity. And my goal by the end of this video, I want you to have a full and intuitive understanding of what a logarithm means and why it is useful for us and the question it asks us when we are declaring a complexity using a logarithm. So let's first investigate what a logarithm is and the fundamental question that a logarithm asks us. So I want you to get, again, the intuitive understanding of this. A logarithm asks us a question. So I want you to look at this, log base 2 of 8. So what does this logarithm ask us? It asks the base of 2 what do I need to power the base of 2 by to get the number in the parentheses, 8? Well, that answer is, that answer is 3. So why is it 3? Let's look at what we're actually doing. So do you see how we're doing 3 divisions until we get down to 1? We go from 8 to 4, that's 1 cutting in half. We go from 4 to 2, that's cutting in half again. And then we go from 2 to 1, and do you see? We cut in half 3 times. This 3 looks familiar. That's the three we just got there. So does that ring a bell? So the thing is, that's why a log base two is considered cutting in half. We are performing divisions by two, divisions by two. So a logarithm is a expression of a having when it is under the base of two. In computer science, we most often use the log base two. In fact, we almost always use log base two but in general mathematics, you're going to see log base 10 most of the time, and this is what you'll see. You'll see nothing. So when you're doing calculus, you're always going to assume a log base of 10. This is just the general thing with normal mathematics. But when you're in computer science, you'll also see, you'll also see the two is not there. So the thing is, it's always the implied context that the base is going to exist in. So when we're doing calculus, we'll just assume it's log base 10. When we're doing computer science, we'll assume it is log base 2. And we're going to see why that is the case most of the time. Anyway, let's look at the second example. Now we're looking at log base 10. We're looking at log base 10, and what does this ask me? I don't want you to look at this. What does that ask me? That asks me, my base is 10. What do I need to power 10 by to get the value 100? Well, the power I need to power 10 by to get the value 100 is, it's going to be 2. So 10 squared is going to be 100. So the thing is, what a logarithm is asking is it's asking, are we doing, are we going to be having, are we going to be tenthing? It's, it's, it's all about powers and calculating exponential quantities. So when we're doing a log base 2, we want to see how many times did I multiply or divide by 2 to get to a certain value. This is like the intuition behind it. So this is what it would look like for the having for the log base of 2. So for the log base of 10, this is what it would look like. So do you see how we just tenth? two times, we just cut tenths twice. We cut halves three times, hence the three, hence the two. This is what a logarithm is all about. Remember, it's all about what do we want to power the base by to get the number in the parentheses. So where does this appear in computer science and why do we care about this? So let's investigate further. So here is a case where our logarithmic time complexity is going to be familiar to us. When we're dealing with any binary structure, like a binary tree of sorts, so we're going to have at least one plus the floor of log nine levels if we have n nodes. n is nine in this case. If we actually do the math, and remember, we're using log base two because in computer science, we always use log base two implicitly. We just assume it's going to be log base two. What we're going to have is the log base two of nine is going to be 3.17. And this little, these little brackets you see, those like brackets are the floor symbol. So it means we just truncate the decimal place. We just truncate the decimal place and we're going to have one plus three. So we have to have at least four levels. So this is accurate. We have one, two, three, four, four levels. We have approximately log n levels. So if we took the asymptotic complexity or the asymptotic behavior of a traversal of the height, we're going to be performing logarithmic work when we are traversing the height of a binary structure like this. If it is balanced, at least. If it is skewed to the right, then we're going to be doing linear time work, but that's, another, that's for another day. We're going to assume we have a balanced tree structure. Now let's look at other implications of where we use logarithms, and we'll notice them in time complexities. All right, so we have an array. So I want to ask you the question. How many times can we cut this in half? 
And let me give you a little help. This is all you need to know to know how many times you can cut this in half until we get to one item. So why is that? So why don't we start cutting it down in half? So let's go one level down and cut it in half. Okay, so now we have cut the input once. We've split it in half once. And now let's split these guys in half. Okay, so now we see we are two levels deep. So how much farther can we go? Let's split these guys in half in this level one more time. So now do you see how many times could we split the original input? So maybe we could use this. Maybe this was a helpful hint I gave you. So if we take the log of this, and again, always base two when we're dealing with complexities implicitly. So if we take log base two of eight, what is the answer to that? What am I asking? What do I need to power two by to get eight? And we can see here, this is how we know how many levels we could split our input. This is where the logarithm came from. So is this familiar? Does this look familiar? So the thing is merge sort and quick sort run in and log n time. When we don't have a specific, when we don't have special knowledge about a certain set of unsorted data, the best we can do is n log n time with merge sort, quick sorters, the fast sorting algorithms. So why is this? In the recursion, we're going to be able to split the inputs for merge sorts up to log n levels of work. As you can see, you see all the levels of work. You see we can split three times, which is log of n. So on each of those levels of work, we do about linear work. Now the recurrence relation and the actual complexity gets a lot more fine tuned than that in terms of like the exact operations we do. But this is a general overview of where that comes from, where that n log n comes from. We have log n levels of work and we're going to be doing a certain amount of work for each level. So that's why we do a multiplication against the logarithm. So that's where that comes from. So this is what merge sort and quick sort will do when they're partitioning the array. In merge sort's case, we drill down to base cases and then we come back upwards with a sorted array. Now let's look at another example where logarithms show up. All right, so now here's another example. We have a sorted array with the indices numbered. We automatically know we can do binary search. We have the invariance that if we cut the array in half at any point, we will have a sorted array in both of our hands. So what we can do is here, we can set our bounds and let's do a binary search and see how many times we can perform a halving of the search space at maximum. Okay, so we just set our bounds and our midpoint is going to be right there. We see we hit four. Is four the value one that we're searching for? It's not. We overshot it. Since we overshot it, we need to look to the left. We want to go lower in value. So what we're going to do is narrow the bounds. Okay, so let's take note of that. So we were able to narrow our bounds one time. So now let's find our new midpoint. Is two the number we're looking for? So the thing is, two is not the number we're looking for, so we need to keep going left. And we found the item one. So we performed a total of two having operations to find our item K. So what is the maximum operations we might have performed? What if I gave you zero? Is zero in this array? Zero is not in this array. We would perform another bound reduction operation and we would have a bound go over. We would have our right bound go out of the array. And at that point, that would be our third check. So I just said the number three. Where does, does that look familiar? Does that sound like a familiar number that's in relation to this problem? So if we look here, three is the log of eight. So again, remember back to cutting things in half? So that is the whole point of it. We can cut in half up to three times. If the item is not there, the worst case is we don't find the item and our algorithm does a total of log eight narrowings of the array. And that is our worst case. We don't find the item and we do that many checks. So that is where the logarithm shows up in binary search. So the reason a logarithm is important is because the question it asks us is very relevant to these problems where there is a halving of search space, a cutting in half, a certain amount of levels of a binary tree. So that is where these log n things come from. And if someone tells you that the solution to a problem is going to have log n complexity, you should immediately be thinking maybe this is a tree traversal thing or maybe this is going to use binary search. That's immediately what you should think because the only context it could have, all it could ever mean, in computer science at least, is a halving of the search space, unless we change our base. So that's all for this video. If this was a clear explanation, if this made things clear, because this is something that used to confuse me, 
Like the video and subscribe to the channel. The point of these videos is to empower software engineers to excel in the interview. And that is all for this video. Ah.